Hi folks, uh, welcome to the STEM Thrive Cliff STEM internships, how to search slash plan for internships. Um, my name is Diana, my pronouns are she, her and hers, and I am a retention specialist in our STEM area. And Nicolette is here and I'll have her introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Nicolette Pierman. I'm also a retention specialist in the STEM unit. Thanks Nicolette. So this Cliff recording is gonna go over a few tips and resources for students as they are preparing to apply for internships um, sometime soon or sometime in the future. So the layout of our presentation is, ooh, I didn't know these transitions were in place. Okay, um, so this is the outline for our presentation. We're just gonna go over just general pieces of understanding like how internships work, um, a little bit about the planning and how um, you can incorporate some things throughout each year while you're at CSU, um, some tips in terms of searching, um, and then we'll talk a lot. I, I feel like the majority of this presentation is really gonna talk about um, this, CSU like resources that are in place. Cool. All right. Hi, Shauna. Thanks for joining. We're just going through the outline. Thanks for being here. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, so just to catch you up, we're doing a recording for this cliff. Um, we have Nicolette, who's also gonna be adding some information for students specifically with her STEM experience as an undergrad. Okay, so with the 101 information of internships, um, we really wanna come back to like the foundation of like understanding the benefits of internships and why that's such a huge part of your undergrad experience. And it'll be a huge part even in graduate school and even after you graduate. Um, so. When you think about internships, really think about an academic internship is a form of experiential education that integrates knowledge and theory from the classroom with practical application and skill development in a professional setting. So it's really the opportunity and space where folks can really apply what they're learning in the classroom into an experience that gives you um, an idea of like what opportunities will look like in your field. And so we'll talk a little bit about the, some different internship opportunities in undergrad. So the first one we're gonna talk about is internship that is uh, for credit. So some students might know this now, some students um, might find this out later on as you maybe change majors or learn a little bit more about your career plan and like your degree requirements, but um, some majors require a for credit internship. And so some of the things to really understand about this is um, the internship requirements. Um, sorry, <laughs> let me move my cat down. Um, so the internship requirements for the student and the employer responsibilities are established by your department. So there's typically someone in your department who's helping um, put these things together for you, because if it is something that is required of you as a student, um, things are hopefully being organized by your department. And so you typically will have maybe a class that goes along with it where they talk you through how to prepare for it. Um, you might have those conversations in your advising appointment. There might be like a workshop. Um, and so just know that those things are in place by your department. The credit is awarded to students by the department rather than the employer upon the successful completion of, of your internship. Um, typically, um, they can last anywhere from 10 to 12 weeks and can range from one to three credit hours. This is a part of like, your tuition because it is for credit. So it's just really important to ask those questions with, and like talk about that with your academic advisor of like when that is needed for your major. Sometimes they require it in a specific time frame, maybe like spring semester of your junior year or spring semester of your last year. If you are feeling like there are overlapping pieces that might impact this, it's just really important to start really understanding your four-year plan or your graduation plan so that you know there aren't gonna be any other pieces that you're planning on top of that. And we'll talk about that a little later in the planning process. 
Um, and so I'll really talk to your academic advisor about these internship opportunities, like I mentioned, um, just so that you really understand what is expected, how to plan ahead and really prepare in case you are already considering specific employers that you have in mind that you've been like really hoping to work with. Um, sometimes your department will offer you like a list of employers that they are already working with and have an internship spot set up. Um, so just really talk to your academic advisor and talk to the people who are in charge of um, the internship experience. Nicolette, do you want to add anything to this section of the, like the four credit internship experience? Yeah, I can add something really briefly. Um, these opportunities can arise during through like organizations as well or programs that's happening through your time at CSU, an example provide is one of my students um, who is majoring in engineering got involved with an engineering outreach program and some of the projects that they're working on will be for credit and give them internship experience as well. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Nicolette. So yeah, so this won't always just happen within your department. There are other things that might come up that might be like you find a professor who wants to take you on and it'll be for an internship experience and you fill out some forms and they kind of help you with that to get that credit for your major and so sometimes things like that happen so we'll talk a little bit about like how to kind of get things going along when it's not formally organized by your department um does anyone have any questions i know shana you're here but no pressure no nope, it's um uh... No, it makes sense. I was just thinking about how I need to reach out to my academic advisor and see what there's available next semester. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing that I wish I would have added to this slide is it's good to just look at the, um, the curriculum of your major um, as it'll state if there is an internship required there, if you haven't talked about it with your <laughs> academic advisor yet, but always okay. just good to become familiar with it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another um, way in which folks do like internships is like through vol volunteering like for like positions. Um, it's not always ideal. Um, and we'll talk about like resources for students um, as they engage with these type of internships because sometimes they're not always feasible for students who need to work, who have like financial needs that they need to like focus on. And that's more important, right? Um, this is a lot of time that people are putting in into these experiences and not getting paid for. So we just really want you to have those resources. And so for voluntary um, internship experiences, it's unpaid and dedicated to complete a certain amount of hours dedicated to projects. So there's always something in place either through like a completion of hours or a completion of a project. Um, so the internship responsibilities are worked out by the student and the, someone who's leading in that organization. Um, and that might be different folks, right? And so it, I, I would recommend that there is a solid plan in place before you engage in the voluntary experience because the hope is that you're getting something out of it that is gonna be applicable to what you're hoping for rather than getting pulled into different things that the position didn't require for you to do that might be kind of misleading or not what you were hoping for. So it's really important that those responsibilities and goals are really laid out at the beginning and agreed upon. And also the deadline because some students were hoping to be finished like by a certain amount of time before finals and then find themselves like go, working through a voluntary internship experience through finals because that information also wasn't like clear at the beginning. Um, an organization may communicate that it's a voluntary internship experience when it's posted. So sometimes people will, organizations, employers will post that it's voluntary. And um, another thing to know is that sometimes students will just seek opportunities out um, from an organization that might not have funds to pay. And so students will take different approaches. It's either by finding it uh, through a posting or connecting with someone um, when they cannot offer any funds to you. I, of course, always ask if there are funds before you offer like voluntary experience and hours of your time. Always ask if there are any funds or things or certificates that can come with that for your experience. 
Um, Nicolette, do you want to add anything to this aspect? I only have just like ways to like get connected with student organizations. Um, most colleges and departments will have like a uh, individual that um, oversees a lot of the student organizations. So that might be a great person to ask um, what student organizations might have these volunteer opportunities, as well as going on like Ramlink um, and asking like faculty as well about these opportunities where they've seen them. Yeah, cool. thank you for adding that. And we'll talk a little bit about like student organizations and how huge of a role they play in helping students find internship experiences. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, Sean, did you have any questions? Okay. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so a little bit about some planning, some things to consider. Um, I mentioned this before already, um, just really understand your graduation plan. Um, and that might change if folks are changing from major to major, just really understand that graduation plan, confirm if that is required of you or not, and when it'll be required. Um, this will help with not overlapping any important pieces such as education abroad or any other positions that you're hoping to take on with like work study or off campus um, and really trying to manage your workload so that you can have like a solid plan before graduation. Um, so with that, really consider your timeline. Um, you don't have to just wait until the semester that your major is requiring you to do an internship. It's never too early to engage with an internship experience if something comes up. And if you're not sure if you're qualified for an internship experience, like your first year, your second year, I would say just take that chance and apply. Um, the more you talk about it and the more you do that research, um, it gets students a little bit more comfortable with the idea of it. Um, and don't just stick with those graduation requirements um, if you can and have the capacity to do so. Um, and just really keep an eye out for opportunities, actively look over like the department newsletters, campus events, and Handshake, which is the platform that the Career Center uses to post internships and employment opportunities both off and on campus. And so um, just be always looking, even if you're not in the space to be applying for stuff, just so that you can see what's out there and what you might be like eligible for. Um, another big piece is talk to people, um, connect with professors, staff, mentors, like anyone, really even like just your peers about like your interests, because a lot of what students will share in terms of how opportunities come up as like internships or employment opportunities is through like personal connections. And I think this is something that the career center always stresses in like our presentations is that um, just tell everyone what you're interested in and then an opportunity might come up there. Um, don't be afraid to look outside of CSU. I think there are a lot of things that you'll find from the Career Center. I mean, always start with what we have on campus with the Career Center, talking to people, looking at your department, anything that you're involved with. And then if there's something that you really want to engage with that's off campus that you know, like you have enough information on, like don't be afraid to look out of state even. Like if you have really been wanting to take some time and work at like Harvard. I'm just like throwing out an ex a random example for a summer program that they have out there doing like STEM mentoring. And this is like an opportunity, but you're not sure. Um, like take that chance and like, don't be afraid to look at a state and even like at international opportunities. And I'll talk a little bit about how to engage in either or. Um, Nicola, anything that you wanna add about like just some of this planning? Um, I can add uh, campus events is definitely like a big thing, like the CSU um, career fair, it always happens each semester and there's dedicated days for different colleges and departments and majors. So definitely always try to engage with that. Um, some colleges and departments may have individual career fairs as well. Um, mm -hmm. I know that the College of Engineering has their own specific engineering career fair, so be on the lookout for like specific college um, department events. Um, and I know one that's coming up is the Just in Time Fair. Mm -hmm. um, 
posted by the career fair. I can't remember the time and day off of my head, but I know that's coming up pretty soon. And I definitely want to stress talking to people and networking um, to get internship opportunities. That's how I got all of my internship opportunities was just talking to folks about my interests and about their opportunities. And that's how I landed it. So I just want to really stress that that's a really big one of how to um, get connected with an internship opportunity. Thank you, Nicolette. Thank you. Shauna, is there anything that like you're also like in your experience have done or has been helpful for you when you've been looking for like internship opportunities or you've heard of other people like talking about? Um, no, I definitely just hearing, um, I did the, the, the first generation psychology major um, uh, meeting, I think it was Monday. And just kind of hearing everybody's paths and like how, you know, what they're involved with currently, what they were involved with back when they were, it just got the wheels turning. But mm -hmm. I've been really interested in like the WGAC and like some of the stuff that they offer with like um, victim assistance specifically, because um, for my long term goal, I want to work with people who've experienced trauma and um you know maybe developed ptsd or not or who are struggling you know just to find resources like you guys do and just you know um i want to be involved in that and i didn't even know that was something that we could even i didn't even know it existed you know so you guys bringing um i believe bringing up the wgac kind of early on in stem last semester made me be like oh wow i wonder what that's about and then i started looking and i'm like for one, it's just excellent for anybody who ever has a situation, um, but also just to be able to help peers and students, you know, um, um, from either side of the of the platform. So that's that's something I'm very interested in for next fall. Yes, I yeah, we talked about um, the WGAC and other a ton of resources in STEM arrived last semester, and like Nicolette put together a really awesome presentation, which is why we stress a lot of like resources and for folks to just be aware. Of, like what's in place. So um, always just look at like what is available at CSU and then don't be afraid to also like look outside of that. I think um, to each meeting or each just extra thing I do, it's like every single time it's just like, wow, I had no idea. Or just like someone sharing their feelings about just like imposter syndrome. We were bringing that up with you guys last semester, but again, in that meeting on Monday, just like, the lady was joking she's got a PhD and is a faculty member and she said sometimes she has to be like why are these people asking me like who am I oh wait yeah I am an expert you know and it was just it's just nice to relate with people like we can't do a lot of stuff face to face so I'm really grateful for everything so thank you yeah thank you for sharing Shauna that's awesome um all right so let's jump on to a couple of resources so this is um, some of the things that we're going to talk a lot about moving forward with the rest of this presentation. And these are some things that everyone in this space has already mentioned. Um, and if this is kind of repetitive, I would say just really consider some of the things that aren't listed here and check in with your retention specialist about things that you know about that might not be listed here in terms of how to continue engaging with opportunities specifically for internships. So let's start off with the Career Center. And so some of the things that we just really want folks to know about the Career Center is that they, they do a lot other than just preparing students for a career after graduation, right? And so they do a lot of events um, and they're all really centered around students being able to apply for either an internship and or, and or employment opportunities after that event, right? It's really supposed to be an experience where you're getting something out of it that is leading to either an internship or an employment opportunity. So they have a ton of events and their website just is really good, well organized in the way of like all the things laid on, they have just a ton of opportunities. Um, advising, they do one-on-one -on -one remote advising at the moment. And here are some of the things that they do advising for. They do resume reviews, mock interviews, salary negotiations, cover letter support. Um, and these are just a few of the things that they talk about. I think as we continue to talk about the resources, I might be bringing up that like the Career Center can help you in this area. Um, so they do a lot and you can set up an appointment through their Handshake platform, which is the next one that I'm gonna talk about. So Handshake is the platform that the Career Center use, uses um, for students to log in, set up 
their advising appointments, register for events, um, find positions off or off campus. And we're really trying to get everyone comfortable using Handshake, including staff and faculty. So um, when someone is hiring on campus, the platform that we're expected to post on is Handshake. So just make sure that you kind of get familiar with Handshake. Um, if you haven't logged into Handshake yet, just know that it is your CSU login information. So use your EID information to log in. Um, another resource in terms of internship support is that they have an unpaid slash underpaid support program for students who are engaging in internships um, who might be getting underpaid, right, or are not getting paid at all. And so the hope is that students are getting support to be able to engage in these opportunities. So they'll provide financial support and they have an application process. Um, so when you're on the website, just search unpaid, underpaid internship support program and it should pop up. And there's contact information on that website in case you have any questions. Uh, Nicola, anything that you wanna add in regards to any of these pieces for the Career Center? Nope, just utilize these resources. Um, I always encourage students to do it um, as a part of your tuition and fee. You've already paid for it, so definitely leverage it. And these folks are here to help you, and they enjoy helping you. So definitely leverage them when you see. Yes, um, and students have access to use the Career Center up to like a year after graduation as well. And so, as you're navigating any career resources, opportunities after graduation, you still have access to engaging with these pieces. Um, the other piece that I wanna talk about is, um, I mean, I, I'm sure that there are a ton of platforms online for specific, like cert, like internships for specific fields. I'm sure like Nicolette has heard of some for like her experience in engineering. I've heard of different ones in my own experience in higher education, right? Um, I think the one, a general one that I wanna bring into this presentation is LinkedIn and it really isn't like a search platform, but it's more of a platform that can, um, um, ooh, I realize I didn't change. I didn't change the titles of these slides on the green. So I apologize, oh my God. Um, so ignore these titles in these boxes. Um, I didn't change those. I definitely added the information down here for LinkedIn. Um, so when you are creating a LinkedIn, if it is unfamiliar to you, if it sounds kind of like it's overrated, it definitely is not. I think it's definitely a resource that a lot of employers and students are still using to engage with opportunities in connection to your field. And so what the Career Center can do is like really help you in a one-on-one -on -one appointment, like set up a LinkedIn account, show you how to use it to like, your, how to really like take advantage of it, how to connect with employers properly so that you're not just like, oh, I don't know how to find people on here. What am I supposed to do? How do I use it? And the Career Center can do that. And, or you can connect with any staff to kind of walk you through some of those pieces. I uh, recommend to really take your time to fully complete your profile before actively engaging on there and connecting with employers. And by completing your profile, it's really just kind of getting your resume in there properly with the functions that they have. Um, there are um, some guides in the Career Center resource page that can guide you on how to use LinkedIn in a variety of ways. And so that can be like completing your profile, how to um, talk about yourself on LinkedIn in a way that really brings out your strengths, um, how to like follow up with employers on there without um, feeling like intimidated by the platform, and then really how to like get responses from employers as well. So ignore these two, y'all. I'm really sorry I didn't have these updated. This is part of that presentation still. <laughs> um, so I wanted to bring some screenshots of the Career Center resource page um, when you go to the Career Center, there is a resource page and they have different options on like what you can find. It's set up almost kind of like a blog, um, but you can type in internships and things will come up. You can type in like graduate school, LinkedIn, and they'll have small like blogs that look like this. Um, and when you click on them, they'll kind of give you more information. They'll give you external links. They'll give you specific information. They're not too long, but it really gets to the point and they're created by 
um, the Career Center like student employees who are really taking the time to research these pieces and like provide them to you. And it's just kind of a resource that's building upon itself. So these are some of the resources that are on there. I kind of just quickly looked up like LinkedIn and these are some things that are posted on our website. To be completely honest, I always look at the Career Center resource page when I'm doing these presentations because they have just like a ton of awesome things that is just like building upon itself and just really good links to external pages, websites, things like that. Nicola, do you wanna add anything in terms of like LinkedIn or the Career Center? Um, I just want to recognize and like just validate like getting used to a new platform like LinkedIn will be difficult so just have some kindness and patience with yourself as you get familiar with LinkedIn, but it definitely is a powerful tool um, and I highly encourage you to like add folks um, that you interact with um, throughout your time at CSU, especially for um, campus events and networking events, like connect with them and like let them know like, hey, we connected at this career fair and I just wanted to send you an invite so we can be a connection for each other on LinkedIn and more times than not, they will um, connect with you and then you'll have access to like their postings, um, whether they post a job posting on like their thread or something. So yeah, yeah it's a powerful tool. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Nicolette. Yeah, I think if folks are not familiar with LinkedIn here, we do want to show that it is a space where there's mainly like recruiters on there. So people are looking for students, people are looking for people to fill in positions. Um, and so what usually you see in the feed is like a ton of opportunities that are popping up, a ton of employers who are reaching out to you based on your completed profile, right? Like sometimes you just search in um stem something right and based on like what you have in your profile people are able to find you in those ways and vice versa right you're able to find employers in the same way as well and through your connections if nicolette adds me now like my connections are accessible to her right and so it's really a matter of building your network and building your online presence and like i said the career center does a really good job at posting things like this for students who are building that profile and also helping you one-on-one -on -one and using LinkedIn in the way that you're really gonna get like a good outcome of it. Um, something else that we've been mentioning here and there is also like your department playing like a huge role. Nicolette mentioned earlier that departments will have like um, career center like liaison which is mentioned here, who really puts on all the information that is from the career center, but really applies it to your department so that it feels a little bit more tangible. It feels like it's a little bit more applicable to your field, your needs. Um, so really pay attention to see if that's something that's already built into the website for your major and your department and is incorporated into like the communication of emails, um, newsletters, and events that are coming up in your department. So check in to see if that's listed there. Um, if you're not seeing things, check in with your academic advisor. Your academic advisor should know um, just because sometimes things from the cursor might be just like for everyone. It might not always just be specific to your area. Professors are just going to be a huge role. They're going to play a huge role as well as part of like what we mentioned before, of like connecting with people and talking to people about your interests. So we really encourage folks to always use office hours, not just to connect about content in the classroom, but really just to build relationships with your faculty, even professors that you might have like shared interest with, or they have research or experience that is similar to what you wanna do, but you don't have a class with them. You should still be encouraged to reach out. Um, it might feel a little, intimidating, but I would say like, do your research a little bit ahead of time, make sure that you really understand like what you're hoping to get out of those meetings, um, come prepared with like some questions and really be upfront about like that, that's what you wanna utilize that time for and that's what they're there for. Um, newsletters, I jokingly said on here, like don't sleep on those emails because I know that like emails have been a lot for our students recently and it can be overwhelming. I totally wanna to validate that. And it's really hopefully used by departments in a way where it's just 
compiled resources and information that are going to be really important for students to look at. So if there's anything that you're looking at online, like don't miss out on these newsletters, really take some time to browse through them every time they come in, whether they're weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, um, just take a look to see what's there. Um, and I've heard of so many students who were randomly looking at a newsletter and saw like a posting for an internship or a scholarship or something that like they saw by chance and had typically like ignored in the past. So take a look at those newsletters. Um, attend student org meeting. If you see that, this is just an example of something that might be in the newsletter, right? So these are just some things to consider from your department. Shana or Nicolette, do you all want to add anything that is also in connection to departments in regards to internships and opportunities? No. Okay. Um, another piece that um, I wanted to bring up, and it comes back to the Career Center um, in their resource page. So this is the screenshot of the Resource Center, um, something that has been pretty awesome that they've recently been adding and is found both in the Resource Center here and also in the department and some department pages, depending on how often they update their websites for like different colleges um, is, I wanna like bring your attention to like the first one here. Um, uh, these are roadmaps for different fields um, and departments at the university. And so these are resources that provide steps and like exploration options for um, your field specifically. And it, it'll include things like internships, um, it'll have links on like where you can find internships in your specific field. This one, as an example, focuses on the natural sciences major. Um, it'll include employment opportunities. It'll include like most common employers in Colorado for people in this field. It'll include like graduate school programs that people in this field will mainly go into. And so it's a really planned out document and you can look up your own roadmap in here. So type in your major, your field, but look at the one that specifically says like your field to career roadmap. Um, and so there's, there's just a ton of different ones. And when I was doing a little bit of digging of like, what are some internship experiences or resources that are housed in the career center? The roadmaps kept coming up for a ton of majors. And when I looked at them, they were all like, just really thought out really good in terms of breaking down each year and things that you could be doing in your first year, second year, third year, fourth year, so on. Have a ton of links of like, here's where you can search for internships. So I wish I could like show you all of them, um, but there'd be so many. So just take a look at those roadmaps as well. Has anyone looked at these roadmaps before? No, I didn't know that that was the thing. That's awesome. I know when I clicked on this one, it took me to that college specifically and it had like so many things. And I was like, oh, I want to screenshot all this stuff and send it here. I even thought of like pulling up the page and I might pull up the page after, but it was just like really good. And I was trying to see if all the majors and like departments had this and it was just, I didn't have enough time. So I really am like posting so much from the Career Center, mainly because the Career Center has like so much built into their office that also is built into the departments, which is why Nicolette mentioned, right? Like the engineering department had their own career center and had their own career like fairs, like their own liaison, like people who are doing stuff for like engineering students specifically, that should be similar across the board, right? And so there are a lot of things that are housed on in your department that are coming from the career center. So it's just a good tool to keep an eye on. Um, the next piece is like student orgs. I think that everyone who's probably engaging with this clip has heard from us in Arrive and now in Thrive that like student orgs are really a great experience for students to have an opportunity um, to connect with folks in your, like who are in your field through a ton of like different opportunities. And so really like why student organizations, like why would anyone engage in like a student org? I mean, there's a ton that are not specific to like careers and some that are more fun, 
right? But really student organizations are intended to help students grow personally and professionally in your field. So you'll hear a lot of students talk about like, I wanna engage with other folks who are doing pre-med, right? And I, I'm not sure what that looks like, but I know that it'll get me connected to the things that I need to know. And typically these student organizations like Nicolette mentioned earlier, are advised by faculty. So there's someone in the department who's really helping these student organizations move forward to help reach their goals of helping students grow personally and professionally in the field. And so like, how can you engage with student organizations? Nicolette mentioned RAM Link as the main resource where you can explore different student organizations that are on campus. So type RAM Link when you're on the website and it should take you to that search engine. When there are student organizations that are specific to your major, they're typically also found in the department pages. It'll give you information of like who to contact, who the staff or faculty advisor is, what their engagement with the department is, any like big events that they do. Um, and usually they're promoted in like the newsletters and things like that. They're also included in newsletters. Um, and typically you can find like a page that We'll have more information on the student org on the CSU page. Um, if not, sometimes they just have maybe a social media account, um, but really take a look. And if you don't see any information on who to contact, follow up with someone um, through the slice office or someone in your department. Um, and so what can these student organizations do for you in terms of internship specific like opportunities? Like, there is more than internships, right? There are employment opportunities, internships that are organized as a group for folks to like engage with. So it kind of gives you more of an opportunity to um, not feel like you're in like a pool of like a ton of other folks. Um, usually student organizations will like fund for students to attend conferences, um, volunteering opportunities, and just receive some mentoring from students who have been in the program and are maybe getting ready to graduate or even have like graduate student engagement. So there's a ton that comes with engaging in student organizations. Um, so talk with your retention specialist if you want to continue exploring student organizations, but it'll definitely be a place that will help you with internships as well. Nicola, do you want to add anything? Um, I just want to just um, stress like how powerful student organizations are. So I was looking at the what column and I literally got everything of the what from being involved with the student organization. I was involved with the National Society of Black Engineers. My first employment after graduation was because of NSB. Most of my internships I got because of my peers that were in NSBE. I was able to travel to different states to go to conferences that was hosted through NSBE volunteered each semester because of NSB and I have mentors now uh, I need to talk to because of NSB. So student organizations are really powerful. They can definitely support you with get, getting those internship opportunities, but also everything in that book column as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Oh my God. Thank you for sharing your experience. Um, I think the only thing that I will share here is that if you find an organization that has like any fees or dues, um, I would say really con like contact them to see if they waive or if they can like work with you. Um, some organizations have taken away those fees completely due to kind of just the situation a lot of folks are in right now financially. And so if you are seeing any of that, especially with um, what are the collegiate organizations, like the honor, what's the word that I'm looking for? The ones based on like GPAs, like like an honor society? Yes, honor society. So those also, I, I feel like the honor societies are more likely the ones that have the dues as well because they want to be able to provide you like top-notch stuff that they just need a little bit more financial help on and they can offer scholarships and more like traveling opportunities. Um, so if you're ever in a situation where you like can't pay and you really want to be involved and you've even been invited to be involved, just ask about what, how they can help accommodate like your financial need as well. Okay, um, I, I didn't put too much information for like off campus planning, but just some of the big things that I wanted to stress is like really do your research um, before like reaching out to 
an organization or employer off campus so that you aren't like contacting someone who you're not supposed to be contacting when there's like someone online listed as like the contact person, right? That's just like a simple example, but really do your research on um, if an organization can house a student intern, if it's paid or unpaid. Um, so Handshake, the Handshake platform will have postings like nationally as well, um, and also internationally uh, for some. Um, I will stress that education abroad can talk through international internship opportunities. Um, don't feel like that's not doable. If you hear about something that education abroad is putting out in regards to doing like a research experience in Europe, somewhere in Europe, um, talk to them and really explore that option if that's something that you wanna do maybe during the summer or during winter break. Um, I have a student right now who is in a different state and is still a student, but all their credits are for one internship. And so they have six credits for an internship that they're doing out of state for this semester. And they were talking to their professor and got everything figured out so that they were getting credit and still being considered a student. So these, these are things that are doable it's just a matter of really connecting with folks to talk about like, what are your options as a student to take these internship opportunities. Talk to professors about potential employers in the area or nationally. So typically for people who are in your field who have some information and tips about um, maybe this employer would be a good opportunity to get involved with. Um, have professors connect you with other people, help them like build your network so that you are not having to do all that research yourself, um, which is why we always share, like talk to people, connect with people. Um, my example that I mentioned earlier is really like do your research before contacting an employer so that you are aware of all the logistics of how to connect with someone. Um, most, more likely than not, employers can offer internship opportunities and should have a plan laid out. If you're finding that there's not a lot of information online, um, don't be afraid to check in with the career center and do a one-on-one -on -one just to go through kind of like how to get connected with one specific employer and you're wanting a little bit of help just kind of getting that connection started through either LinkedIn or an email or sending a resume, things like that. Um, always check if there's like an internship coordinator, um, check the website, check LinkedIn if there's someone connected to the organization. Um, yeah, these are just some things to consider when you're doing like an off-campus internship like search process. Um, anything that like Sean or Nicolette, you all wanna add in like your own experience of doing searching like off-campus? I would just stress to definitely do your research before contacting, contacting the employer. It could really work against you like not in your favor if you don't do research because that shows them that like you're not willing to put in the work to actually actually like get the job so definitely do your research and when you do that also works in your favor because some folks might see see out of like going out of your way to make sure that you're knowledgeable about what you're asking the employer about and then employers will just understand too that like you're actually doing your homework before you contact them awesome thank you that's a good point. Yeah, I was gonna say, as far as studying abroad goes, mm -hmm. um, excuse me, I took a bite of salad right before. I, um, <laughs> I'm like, um, 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 so I, I of course could research this more on my own, and I and I will. So if you don't have the answer, that's fine. But um, I imagine you like live with a host family type of thing, or like. Do you have to like figure out your own place to live on top of the school on top of like how does that work kind of or do you know mm -hmm. yeah so i mean i think that education abroad will do a really good job at and your department too sometimes there are like internship opportunities that your department will promote that are in a different state that are like international and so i think what's going to be really important is to like get connected with someone who's out there coordinating that internship as well, who can walk you through like, what are your options in terms of taking on this international like internship experience, even when you're considering like education abroad itself, it's a little similar. And so 
Um, there should be things that are in place in terms of housing, whether that's placing you with like a host family or placing you in like an apartment with other students who are doing the same experience in a residence hall within the university or community. And so um, when it's something that is advertised by a department or education abroad in conjunction, there's always like a plan or something in place rather than kind of like, hey, there's this random position, but we're, we're just promoting it, but we don't have any other information. Um, I would say Education Abroad has like a really good foundation and like built support. Um, like they just have a good system in place to help students um, either do Education Abroad, an internship. Um, I think graduate school is a little different, but um, anything that would be affiliated from like the university that they're promoting. So yes, they can help you through that. They do one-on-one -on -one advising where they can walk you through those pieces. I would say what would be helpful to get a lot of those things figured out early is that you start early. If you see that there's something posted for this internship for winter break, then if you see it posting now, like start having that conversation, start planning that out now so that you don't miss out an opportunity because we couldn't figure out housing. Okay, thank you. Um, anything that you want to add, Nicolette? to that question? Um, I know for sure some type of like housing stylist they have is a host family, as well as just everybody staying together at one place, such as like a hotel or a hostel. So those are like the two for sure possibilities that it could be formatted. Yeah, I would say for folks who are wanting to do an international or out of state, internship is like don't wait until you like hear about it or see it like go, go talk to education abroad now to get an idea about it I think education abroad um they'll give you the information it's just a matter of like finding that information early to plan help plan for it um and then I think the biggest things that I talked um about in this presentation um, is really like talking to your department um, and recognizing like what's in your department, like faculty, academic advisors, the website, newsletters. With the Career Center is really about like internship prep advising, handshake, internship search platform, the resource page and events, and then LinkedIn, which is, I didn't mean to have this thing saying off opportunities. Um, and sorry, I clicked on that. So ignore this, the off opportunities, but these are really huge things to help you. I mean, if you're considering other resources that are not listed on here, that, that's okay. I, I would say continue utilizing those resources um, that are not listed here, but here are just some of those things. Um, and that's really all that I have for this presentation. Uh, for folks who are engaging with this recording, just please remember to complete the STEM Cliff evaluation that's found on our website. Um, and the deadline for all cliff evaluations is May 7th. Um, yeah. Anything that anyone wants to add in this space for anyone who might be engaging with this recording later on? Um, not really pertaining to internships because I haven't um, partook in any of those yet, but just if anybody's listening to this or watches this, just get involved. That's something that they were saying at my meeting on Monday, you know, just, I came to this and I learned more, you know, and just every single thing that comes around that you have the time um, to jump on just for an hour, you can learn so much. And it just, each thing just webs off each thing. It's, it's phenomenal from joining up with you guys and, and just finding all these amazing people and hearing their stories and just, yeah, it's incredible. So just, do as much as you can to go above and beyond just your coursework. It's uh, it's made a huge difference for me. Thank you guys. Thank you, Shauna, for sharing that. And I'm sure folks will appreciate that who are engaging with this. So thank you for being here. I'm going to go ahead and just stop the recording. Um, yeah, so thank you all. Thank you. Have a good